charms. Yo, yo, Zanzi, you get the best in science and technology, aka another incredible TOMZ episode, proudly brought to you by Abba Kulum Kingdu, Bobe, to SABC Education, only here on SABC One, Zanzi, for sure. Well, Tony, let's wait. I'm telling you, it's going to be packed with the best edutainment as we explore the difference between natural and man made structures. Why is that important, you may ask? Well, while well, there's thousands of human young, both about to and animals that build structures to protect themselves from the wild, wild world, as well as create a safe place to raise their young. As a band, we obviously have different techniques as well as the materials that we build with, but a lot of ideas is the suga with nature actually. Mm, and you'll find out more about this later on in the show, as well as we visit a landmark in Joburg to discover why buildings are actually so important. Facebook and Twitter, just what you think because you don't too much. I'm going to go to TOMZ. I'm going to go to TOMZ. I'm going to natural and man made structures. Why or what types of structures exist? Is Ranya Nagi a master's when it comes to building? Check out their creations as we go for a walk in the park. Is an article to visit a landmark to learn more about a man's building practices? Get technical when you look at the four purposes of structures. Go digital with some apps to help you stay in the game. Literally. And get some savvy career advice to help you propel into the future. So, guys, now I'm telling you, we have two key terms at play: natural and man-made. Make sure we get part of this bin. Umba lulege ga kuluko. Do you remember when I pick up here? And do you have any idea as to which types of structures exist out there? We took to the streets of Mzansi to see if by us in the bed with all in look. What's the difference between man-made structures and natural structures? Uh, man-made like the structures that are made by people. Okay. And natural is structures that are there like. Made by nature and so on. Ah, structures are three, whether it's man made or natural. Or was it? Yo. Just no building. A man made Taj Mahal in India. Okay. So why do you think we need structures like Mtlaben in general? Sometimes to remind us the existence. If it's a human made structure, then that people literally worked hard to do these designs. In natural structures, because there was this man as daughter, quiet and as for mana in nature, and jenge behind the canyons as well as spider webs. Mm -hmm. Man made structures, on the other hand, are made by humans for a specific purpose. Got to get some super local later on on the show. Inshallah, look, I now is running as means get natural creatures, yeah, was to build their own structures. Jong I term as they get up, but then I saw to bring strong structures that protect them from the elements as well as exclude our man's from them. Zindaj gay types of structures are part of this win. A young girl is the classic means a shell structure. Now, Gamans are our gay lie on the outside in the shell and they protect Izindu on the inside. A Makanda gay are a good example. A Yasmin is the classic means a frame structure. Now, these structures are made up of many different parts that are put together in a way that makes the frame strong, like bicycles and leaves. AS Tatuke type is called solid structures. Now, they are usually made up of one type of material and don't consist of parts with spaces in between. Think about a rock and a spoon, they consist of one solid material. Is Ranyan as a dinger to have shelter in order to peel up why is Kulis a babo? Some animals can build their own structures while others live in natural habitats. Sertinagas Pumas Yopeg are the work of some of the amazing builders of nature. Yasutin Pegala. Good day, my name is Kubis Tianerson. I am based here at Tlofendal Nature Reserve in Riddleport area. It's a facility of the Johannesburg City Parks and Zoo. And uh, our function here is to do conservation. The Southern Africa region has more than 900 species of birds. We are fortunate to see the different habitats they are using to nest. This is an example of a guinea fowl nest which is a rudimentary nest made of uh, mainly uh, a hole in the, in, the, in the ground. And then they use uh, soft grass and uh, feathers uh, to line it out. And they will hatch here as well. Uh, you will also get other examples like the plovers, which will use more rudimentary type of nests. They will use a footprint and uh, lay their eggs, bear their in the footprint. As you can see, the hole there on top, which is a hole excavated by a barbet. Normally the crested barbets or the black collared barbets are uh, excavating holes uh, in a tree, but they will also use uh, man-made structures for that. And the uh, black collared uh, barbet would use his strong bull 
to excavate the hole and the wood chips they would normally carry away to avoid attention to the nest. As you, uh, as you will look at a uh, crested barbet or a, a black collared uh, barbet, you would see that they've got a very strong bull structure and they use that specifically to excavate the uh, sharp as well, to excavate the, the hole. We are here in a woodland thicket and here you can see two types of nests. The larger one is a nest of a Cape Sparrow. The Cape Sparrow is building an untidy, bulky, ball-shaped nest of dry twigs and leaves and grasses. And then he would also then line it out with uh, pieces of plastic and wool and hair. The lesser bulky one is the one from the home sparrow. And they would make the similar type of untidy nest. This bulky ball shaped nest of the uh, Cape Sparrow is uh, built in a fork of the tree uh, branches uh, in order to support it. Whereas the uh, weaver nests are woven uh, on a thin twig of a branch. This is an example of a paper wasp and her nest as well here. Yeah? The nest has been made by uh, the saliva. She used it with some plant material as well. And it's built with different types of cells. The nests are uh, attached to uh, underneath trees or underneath structures like building structures, rooftops, etc. This is an example of a small portion of the beehive of the bee. Uh, nicely built each cell with wax and then each cell will then eventually have one egg in it. This is an example of a termite nest which you will find in a mold of a termite nest uh, on the ground and they are made by saliva as well and uh, moist moist uh, mud and then they are in different different uh, canals running through the whole structure which they then have different rooms as well. This is a close-up example of the southern mast weaver and you will see the plant material they used which is grass and also leaves which they then used to waterproof the roofs of the nest as well of the chamber. Here you can see the chamber, there's the entrance and the entrance has been also strengthened and as well as you can see here it's been strengthened Benzing has by nature had so many savvy builders here along with that we use some of the principles in nature to actually inspire us when it comes to Ogwaka In Vawe AK Fuge we'll see how humans do this on a big scale as we visit a famous landmark Ongai Dao skyscrapers to line our city skyline. structures Africans to survive and thrive. Inyoni zaka amanes to lay their eggs. Spiders make webs to catch food, and humans build buildings with matlalo guwo. Now, guess what? Nilo makupa nege ganga for animals to actually build their shelters away from danger. In 1975, the tallest residential skyscraper ever in Africa was built and became the place to be for those who wanted a 360 view of each Obek. I'm glad you get still raised up by Jobik skyline and is known as Ibond. Mm -hmm. It was also the first cylindrical skyscraper in Africa and is famous for its interesting architecture and vibrant residential life. <laughs> My name is Nicolas Bauer. I'm the co-founder of Lala Nje. Lala Nje 
aims to create social transformation and development opportunities for the underprivileged in Johannesburg. So here we have Ponty Towers. I mean, it's uh, synonymous with the Johannesburg skyline. People often wonder why I've decided to live here, and it's because I couldn't imagine living anywhere else, really. I mean, where else am I going to wake up and have such a fantastic view uh, in the middle of Johannesburg while I sip my morning coffee? Uh, and also, there's a fantastic camaraderie in this building. I mean, if you live in Ponty, you're part of a greater community that just wants to, you know, get by with life and, and, and move on to, to where they want to be, you know. Um, Ponty is a place where people can grow, but not only uh, where, where people can come to, but where people can come from as well, you know. Um, I, I've really, really enjoyed living in Ponty and, uh, and just being part of the, the community and also part of the, the change of perception this place uh, has undergone. You know, a lot of, Not a lot of people would have wanted to stay here 10 years ago, but now a lot of people want to call it home. There's a waiting list to, to move into the building. So Ponty became a landmark. It opened up its doors in 1976. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a spot in the inner city for the, the upper crust. You know, if you're living in Ponty, you were living in the creme de la creme part of the, the, the city. You know, it was really um, known as the, the elite's home. And then, you know, over the years, it's gone through a couple of changes. Like I said, it's been a slum and it's now come and become a haven for the middle class in the inner city. But Ponty itself, I mean, it's, you can't look at the Joburg skyline and not see Ponty. That's how the place became a, a, an icon in, in the first place. You know, you can't look at Johannesburg and not see Ponty in the skyline. Uh, and if you grew up in Johannesburg, you heard nothing good about this building, you know, like all of the bad stories that you've hear, heard about uh, inner city Johannesburg, about, uh, you know, gangsterism, crime, uh, you know, this was the poster child uh, of the underworld of uh, Johannesburg, but it's, it's coming back, it's different now, you know, things are, things are changing, people want to stay in Ponty and I'm one of those people. At the bottom you have uh, your retail uh, area. I mean, the first eight floors of uh, the building are actually just parking, and then you've got your retail area. It's the same level as the entrance to the building. And uh, like I said, you've got supermarkets, you've got uh, laundromats, you've got a doctor as well, takeaway, all sorts of things. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, it's all that you need all in one. The building opened up its doors in 1975. It was put together by an architect called Rodney Groskopf and a designer called Manny Feltman. It actually has to do with municipal bylaws that were around uh, in the 70s, the time when this building was built, is that uh, you needed to have two sources of light and air in your kitchen and your bathroom. So it was just a design that they used to create the, the most flats as possible, get the most bang for buck in terms of the area that they had. It stands at 167 meters high. It's 54 stories high as well. Sometimes you wake up, you're in the clouds. Sometimes you wake up, you're under the clouds. And there's nothing quite like waking up in the middle of a thunderstorm or experiencing a hardcore Joburg thunderstorm in the middle of it, 54 stories uh, up into the sky. If you look at the design, it's pretty brutalist, you know. It's just concrete, concrete, concrete. 54 stories of hardcore concrete, you know. Uh, and this building is, is built for the test of time, if, uh, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's been through hell and back. It's, it's been a slum, it's come back, now it's a haven for the middle class of uh, inner city Johannesburg. And the only reason this building has survived because, is because it was, it was built fantastically. If lightning hits Ponty, the place is so well grounded that none of your appliances will ever, uh, will ever go up in flames or anything like that. You have like this red little flash of, uh, of light, and then you know, lightning's hit the building, but you won't feel it. The center is basically the worst part uh, of Ponty in terms of, of the history and where it's come from. I mean, the center was filled with 14 stories of, of trash. So the core is one of the more interesting parts of the building. I mean, the, it's mixed up with the foundations and the actual rock of the area upon which the building was built. Uh, the foundations, as far as I understand, go down 10 stories below the earth. So maybe that's why Ponty is so, uh, you know, sturdy when it comes to it. So Ponty's kind of like the United States of Africa, man. You've got loads of people from all over the continent calling this place home. Zimbabweans, Zambians, Nigerians, Senegalese, people from east, west, north and south Africa uh, just calling this place home. I mean, there's loads of, uh, of facilities here as well. You can quite literally move into Ponty and not really need to leave the place. There's restaurants, uh, there's our community center, there's a supermarket, there's a takeaway, there's a salon, laundromat. It's just uh, everything, all that you need rolled into one. There are four main functions of structures. Oyokbala is to contain something, to keep what's inside from spilling all over the place and to keep it separate from other things. Enyege is to protect something like the shell of an egg so that the insides don't get all mashed up. Air's tied to get that would be to support something or hold it up. A roof truss is a good example because it keeps the roof up and makes sure it doesn't come tumbling down. 
is to span between objects in order to connect them. So I can get bridge and crosses over from one side to another to allow people or cars to move over it. Now we have a better idea of why certain structures are the way they are. Oink, for example, is a shell because it protects what is inside, but its strength lies on Mpandawai. Mm. The structures are incredible features of engineering and design. The pyramids in Egypt were built more than 4,000 years ago and are some of the biggest structures lie in Klabin and Plus, they still stand today. Some digital resources to learn about these things and be inspired by the wise words of Ingrid Rizit. As we dig into the history of structures worldwide, why guess if man has some apps and some business is a fool they got cool and get great career advice. Which I don't think you're gonna because what would they learn was all possible? Yeah, but yeah, but yes, my fair two assess boy is actually not to call a good teenagers on a mission. Probably sponsored by SABC Education. Call a good SABC one and Zanti for sure. Shallow can you learn more to get among a side come on the snow from the look about natural and man made structures? So, when we ask Ganya Ganya about why I want to build structures, why you see some masterpieces of nature? Usem Nan, Usem Grand, Usem Judge. Now we're jumping back in time to see where it all started and getting some savvy career advice to helping you on your way. Oh, yes, now our bank have been building structures for thousands of Minyaka. Some of them functioned as houses or places where they could trade, while many others had religious significance. Mm, mm, mm. Of course, natural structures aren't always made by Iluan, but could be a part of the earth, like caves. One of the oldest buildings up in Shaben City, Klasi Ibiza, is a in 9,500 BC in Turkey and was served as a sanctuary. The Sahari Sakta in Iran, built in 3200 BC, was made up mostly of mud and was actually an urban settlement before it was mysteriously destroyed. Our Pagam Zanz Africa, the oldest surviving building is the Castle of Good Hope in Cape Town, which was built between 1666 and 1679. Why again, it serves as a place for our military seat and a historical museum. When it comes to natural structures, Table Mountain is considered one of the seven natural wonders of the world and has a level top of about three kilometers wide. Once the Uzan Amklanj get the gap between man-made and natural is becoming smaller. Here researchers get, have created a new material that promotes the growth of new blood levels, normally a completely natural phenomena. For 2010, get the tallest man-made structure up in Mklabeni, the Burj Khalifa, was completed and has a whooping of 160 floors. It designers get us with seven biomimicry in the creation of new structures, which involves using the science and the art in nature to mimic nature's solutions to problems. The Beijing National Stadium is a good example. It looks like a bird's nest. It's a news game of Nazik Funde when it comes to natural structures. I mean, some of the most famous ones all over in Lizuletu are used as tourist attractions in order to teach our band or Batabas to learn about the unique history of a certain place. Mm -hmm. Other than that, man made structures are a great way for people to show off their building and design skills. Whenever you walk through a city or town again, take a look at the structures around you and try to figure out why they are built the way they are. We're giving you access to some apps and useful websites. Natural Seven Wonders History is a great app for Kundagabanzi about the natural wonders of Umhlaba. These are completely as a result of nature, and this app will give you yonki from pictures and fun facts to history tidbits and put you into the know. If man-made marvels are more of your thing, then Funego Upege in Megapolis in the city builder game. Lapa Uzokon Waka everything from airports, railway stations to mines and power plants, all to help Abantu of your city thrive. Lapa Uzokon Funda about the financial side of building and the interaction between nature and man. For Nia Lapa Makai who wants to sharpen your skills for school with fun exercises, then you have to go on to www.thunderboltkids.co.za. Uklike Ikredyako and you you will follow the link to the life living where you can choose which structures Ufunukfunda Gabanzi about. Try out some of the exercises and I bet you, you will see the school marks shoot to the roof. As we name that fit. These biologists get assigned to introduce the Fundi about his Ranyana and their habitats. They can work in laboratories or out in the fields observing his Ranyana and their natural environment. Now, I'm a geologist, I'm a Nengige, end up working at colleges and universities where they conduct research and teach about Fundi. They also help to put together plans for conservation. I'm going to find my geologist. Let's go and find out about the requirements of actually becoming a geologist. No, so. The basic degree you need to become a geologist is a three year Bachelor of Science degree. Most of the universities in South Africa offer this, like the University of Pretoria, University of Johannesburg, Swana University of Technology, University of Cape Town, University of KZN, and the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. 
And then go to Kriya Koge Ungaya on to further studies to a PhD in order to improve your knowledge and experience. As needs care of these universities require mathematics as a school subjects, but subjects like physical and life sciences will be very useful. Between 60 and 69% for mathematics in Afrikaans or English in grade 11 and 12 is very important, but make sure to focus on your science subjects as well. As needs care universities accept applications until the end of September, go to a check out your varsity of choices website for the deeds. Yo, I get yes, I need to the information to take in at once. A career in zoology sounds exciting, especially for those about Tanda Iluane and nature. Inshallah, can you see if that's your passion going to Apple Kai, then it might be just for you. Let's get some because they've some advice from Indian who said about careers in general. Check it out. If you want to follow the nature conservation field, you have to study at a college to do a national diploma in conservation or at a university institute where you can obtain a degree in environmental management uh, or in uh, any other disciplines related to conservation, which is botany, zoology, entomology, and so forth. If you want to then enter the uh, world of nature conservation, you could apply to become a, a conservation a uh, specialist or a uh, game ranger or a field guide at different institutions like the national parks we have and other private game reserves and also institutes dealing with animals and plants and birds. Facebook.com <laughs> MZ, now on my class, you go Twitter at Tom's underscore SABZ underscore one. Yes, you don't. Where now? Keep tweeting, keep Facebook, keep, keep, keep doing it. <laughs> For spending the afternoon with us, learning about natural and man-made structures. Mm -hmm. We are here to answer any questions on our now. So post them on our Facebook and Twitter pages, and go on to now on the show. Inshallah, Kanye, do not forget that you, them, that you rock, and good luck with all those marks in school. Ciao. Next time on TOMZ. We find out about just what it means when our bodies start to change while we go through puberty. We get the inside story on the female menstrual cycle. We get all the facts on male circumcision. Why can clockwise to find out all about traditions from around the world that transform people into adults? Unga posta ko wena ngutio MZ konge mifulena ngolesi bini yensi mbe sine ngai tongo apa ko esepi siwan sansi for sure.